We are gods and goddesses. You know, we are, we don't need Europeans to try to teach us how to get to heaven. We can get to heaven on our own because what we are, the heaven is within us. So she's a goddess, and she just got citizenship also in Ghana. Dr. Sharia, will you share a few words? Good evening, everybody. I'm so tired. I cannot sit down. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for being late. I came for another engagement, which was really nice. The African ancestry um, had a family reunion. It was really nice. They rebuilt some people's uh, uh, DNA today, like about five people. They just found out just today, you know, their lineage. So that was really nice to witness. And it was also pushing me to go ahead and get my DNA done too, you know. I mean, I'm here, so. <laughs> I'm an African, but it, it would be nice to know exactly uh, what tribe, you know. Um, just recently, I got my citizenship, like I said. I didn't even know what I was speaking on tonight. <laughs> I just always come and support my brother, you know. Um, I mean, if I'm in town for the last uh, 11 years, you know, I, I try to show up and disengage my brothers and sisters because I'm always glad to see, you know, our people come, uh, whether it's for the first time and you come in for the 100th time, it's always good to see um, our people coming back home. And this is a perfect uh, time to be alive in Africa. A perfect time to be alive in Africa. Uh, Africa is rising as was predicted. We have our pros and cons, but we can see a lot of things um, taking place, a lot of changes taking place in Africa, and um, this is the place for Africans to be. Whether you are living here, or you are just doing business here, or you just want to uh, bring tours here, whatever you want to do, but just make, always make some kind of connection uh, with the motherland. I was um, listening to the president of Ghana, I think about a week ago, and he mentioned, he talked about China, and he said 26% of China's um, income actually comes from outside of China. So this is basically the Chinese doing direct business and bringing put money back into you know, their system. And so I saw that that was something that was really important uh, for us to um, look at. Because you know, just when we put things in numbers, you know, I'm a numbers person, so I, I see it a little bit different. We put it in numbers, and um, it maybe reflect that you know we should you know. So, so one thing that I did myself was recently I went to go and made a connection with uh, some farmers that's doing cayenne pepper. We have a company called New Body Products that's been around since 1976, and it's a herbal company, and we use a lot of cayenne pepper. So it, it, we know it comes from Africa, but we're not getting it direct. You know, it's going somewhere else and then coming to us. So I talked to them, and then we trying to, you know, make make a, you know, some understanding of the business deal. Try to get some time as far how how long it's going to take for us to get our first order. You know, and we just trying to work out everything. So that was one of the things I said that at least let me just have at least uh, well two items because right now we have Marinda on our line with uh, dealing with um, David. Now we just had a partnership, I think we started about maybe six months ago. So now we have Marina in our line coming. So Marina coming direct from Ghana. So we do have one. I'm very happy, very proud about that because that's one thing I've been working on since I've been here. So um, anyway, um, there's a lot I would you know like to share, but um, when it comes down to this year of return, just one thing I, I just said, if I got the mic, I have to talk about something that some people not, might not want to talk about, but it's something that has to be talked about. And we talked about this the end of the year of return, 2019. And the question is, what's next? What's next? And we've had a lot of um, praises, sorry, praises and criticisms in reference to this whole year of return. But at the end of the day, we return. Whether it's a, they feel like it's about tourism and money, whether they feel like our brothers and sisters are coming back home, whatever it is, the ancestors lined everything up and we are in the divine time 
you know, to be here. So one of the things that my answer to what's next is not come here, spend your money, make some business deals, help build Africa, no. We hear that all the time. I've been hearing that for 13 years since I've been coming to Ghana. I'm pretty sure all of us that has been from the diaspora, as well as the names that lived outside and come back. It's always about come back, build Africa, build Ghana, bring your money, bring your skills. So when you say that to me, that means that you're not talking to all of us, right? Because all of us, some of us don't even have the money to even buy a plane ticket to get over here. But we have skills. But when we get here, it's like, we gotta start from scratch and in a whole nother continent. I even know the country, a whole other continent. And that's a that can be a scary thing. We already deal with fear every day over there. So now you bring us a whole nother um, you know, level of fear. And so the thing the next thing to do is the healing. The healing has to take place. We have to heal. We have to come back and come and, and, and spend time with our brothers and sisters, uh, exchange, WhatsApp each other, email each other. You know, there's no reason why we can't communicate with each other these days. And we have to start having these conversations. I talked to somebody in tourism uh, today and um, I told them, I've been watching you all year speak about the year of return. He's kind of like the PR person. And I said, today again, I'm, I'm listening to you say the same thing that you said in January when we had a press conference about the year of return. And I told him that I haven't heard one time. Well, let me say, I have heard one time that somebody talked about the healing. And with our journalists uh, telling the story, talking about the year of return, they haven't got it right yet. And so, the person that actually got the story right, that talked about doing the healing, the person who wrote the article was a white woman. Now, I will say this, she was quoting a Ghanaian, three Ghanaian brothers who are actually actors in America, grew up in, I think, D.C., Baltimore area, and one of them I recognize, um, but they kind of came in the very beginning and kind of kick-started a little bit of the year return, got some attention from their, you know, uh, people who were following them out in, in America. So we're kind of bringing the attention, but they were the ones that say that now that we have brought our brothers and sisters home, now it's time for the healing. One article, and I've been looking at many of them, and I'm pretty sure you can say the same thing. We haven't seen anything that talked about our healing. And see, there's some things that in the healing, we have to be able to identify, I'm a healer. I'm a naturopathic doctor, so I have to identify what is um, that you are sick, and then what's making you sick. And then once I can identify what's making you sick, then we can come up with some kind of solution. So I feel like now we're at the point where Now we're at the point where um, we can start the healing, and we will go through some healing crisis. You know, that's one of the things when you're dealing with disease. You know, we we're, our, our family is disease, and that's the we're not at ease. That's that's what <laughs> disease is, is when we're not at ease. You know, and we have to come together and start having these conversations, start learning about each other. The brother I was talking to today. He started telling about his people and where he's from and giving me a little history. I said, all this time I've been seeing you, I never heard you talk about that. I said, why don't you talk about those things? You have so much time on the mic. Talk about, let people know who you are. Because that makes you, that gives me a connection to you. Because the only thing I hear coming out your mouth is how much money Ghana has made. The $1.9 million, billion dollars. One point, you know, this, this is like a record high. And, the thing about it is we still have to deal with the healing process because at 1.9 billion could easily turn into 5 billion and 10 billion. It'll be unlimited, you know, the abundance because when we as Africans come together from the diaspora and on the continent wherever we are in this universe, <laughs> ancestral and all that, 
when we come together and we heal, we're, he we're healing all of humanity. You understand that? All of humanity will be healed when the African is healed. This is the beginning and this is the end. This is the Alpha and the Omega. And they know that. So we have to make sure that we take an advantage of just coming home to your motherland. You know, just being here. I know I've been here 13 years and I still can't believe them. I'm still like, now I'm on a whole nother trip because I got my citizenship. And let me tell you something about that. I, I tripped. I really tripped because for me, I said, let me get the citizenship because I do business in Ghana and there's so much, the, the prices are so high for foreigners. And I was living here as a foreigner on paper. So I have a product. Uh, um, we have CKLS as a colon cleanser by New Body Products. I don't know if some of you guys might know Dr. Paul Goss. Um, when you go to the FDA and your um, uh, supplement, $1,800 every three years, you have to pay to have your um, product on the market here. <coughs> if you're Ghanaian, it's 500 Ghana CDs every three years. You see? So for me, and then also, I want to be able to move around different parts of Africa. I got to get a visa to go here, visa to go there. Be so for me, and then my residential fees and my work, you know, all that stuff. So for me, it was like, okay, it just makes business sense for me to become a citizen. So that's where my mind was, because as far as I was concerned, I repatriated 13 years ago. And I, me and the Ghanaians have been having a love affair since I've been here. You know, so I was already, I'm an African, I'm here, I'm on the soil. As far as I'm concerned, I'm not worried about these imaginary borders and all this paperwork. But like I said, it was just to make things easier. But when I got that night, when I got that paper in my hand, and I really got a chance to really see what, you know, like, experience that, my ancestor said, sweetie, little girl, this is not about you at all. I mean, your little business or whatever, this ain't got nothing to do with that. This is about us. Take care of some unfinished business. Coming back home. The place they said we would never come to again, ever. Ever. And now we're here. So I didn't think about it, but I shouldn't have been home by myself that night. Because <laughs> it got really real. It got really real. The ancestral energy was right, like on me, not even just around me, just on me. And I thought about when the slave got their freedom papers. This must have been what it felt like to be free. My president is black again. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Let's give her a round of applause, Dr. Like Sharia. She also does the, the biannual uh, cultural festival on the mountain where she has Mutubaruka and other people. So she's really done a great job uh, with the festival. You may want to come. Is it next year or is it this yeah, year? 2021. 2021. Okay. Every um, every, two years. every two years, great festival that she's doing. So she's really a, a, a great Ghanaian and is doing the work that um, we all are doing. Um, again, 